Welcome to the Minnesota Streetcar Museum training video for the Excelsior Streetcar Line. You are being trained for the position of operator. As an operator, you may play one of two roles, either motorman or conductor. While these terms may not seem very gender sensitive, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, there was not a lot of gender sensitivity. The motorman is at the front of the streetcar and has slightly more responsibility in the operation of the streetcar and is responsible for the forward motion of the car. The conductor is at the rear of the streetcar and operates the car when it is traveling in reverse. Communication between the motorman and the conductor is key to smooth operation of the car. Methods of communication include the bell, which is rung by pulling the cord overhead, the buzzer, which is located only at the rear of the car, and the ammeter, which is at the front of the car. A round trip on this streetcar line starts at the Water Street Station, runs to Old Excelsior Boulevard for a brief stop, and then back to Water Street. Since the front of the streetcar faces Water Street, this video will start at Old Excelsior Boulevard, moving forward initially going to Water Street, then returning to Old Excelsior Boulevard, showing the reverse motion of the car. We will first review the location of the various controls on the streetcar. To the left is the main controller. As the motorman, you will be using this for both forward motion and reverse motion. It is in the off position, but has five levels of speed. There are 600 volts of electricity running through this controller. The speed is regulated by a resistance device under the car. When traveling at slow speeds, the resistance device can become hot, so for at least part of the travel, the operator should try to move the controller level up to the 4 or 5 position. Also on the controller is the direction control. Think of the shift lever on your car. The three positions are forward, neutral, and reverse. The controller key cannot be accidentally removed in either the forward or reverse positions, but can be removed and should be removed at certain times when in the neutral position. In the middle of the picture is the brake air pressure gauge. The red needle tells you how much pressure is being applied to the brakes. Prior to engaging the controller to move forward, that gauge must read zero by releasing the pressure with the brake control at the right. The other meter in the picture, just to the right of the brake air pressure meter, is an ammeter. This shows how much power is being used by the engines. The motorman should keep an eye on this while the car is in reverse motion as it tells him when the conductor has cut power from the other end. The last device in this picture is the brake airline valve. It is in the up or forward position in this picture, but will be moved down for reverse motion. By moving this lever down, you switch control of the brakes to the conductor when in reverse motion. The braking of the car is probably the most difficult part for trainees to get used to. The brake lever at the front of the car is a large wooden handle that rotates left and right. Pushing the handle far left releases the air pressure to the brakes completely, and moving the handle far right creates the highest air pressure applied to the brakes. When the lever is moved to the middle or 6 o'clock position, it is considered in lap position. Lap position will maintain whatever was last applied to the brakes. If the air pressure has just been completely released, then lap position will keep the brakes off. If you last had moved the lever to the right to apply some braking, moving to lap position maintains that amount of braking. It does not release the brakes. Moving the lever back and forth on the right side does not vary the pressure to the brakes like it does on a car. The only way to let up on the brakes is to move it past the lap position to the left. So, once you start to feel some braking, you can move the lever to the lap position and let the brakes continue to do their job.
At the other end of the car is another set of controls used by the conductor when traveling in reverse. Here there is a limited number of controls. On the left side of the wood panel are two lever switches. One is labeled on and one is labeled off. These are flip switches, which means you only have to push them upwards, then let go and they return to their previous position. The brake lever is smaller than the one in front, but works similarly. The handle is folded down for use. Pushing the handle far left or clockwise releases the brakes and moving the lever to the right or counterclockwise increases the air pressure to the brakes. As in the case with the front brake lever, there is a lap position in the center. As in the front, when you want to apply brakes, you move the lever past the lap position until you'll hear and feel a little braking, and then move the lever back to the lap position to let the brakes continue to do their work. If you keep the lever to the right, the air pressure will continue to build rapidly and the car will stop sooner than you might want it to. Oh, and I almost forgot. On the floor at each end of the car is a small foot button. When pushed, it rings a gong. The gong is intended to let people know that the streetcar will be in motion or to alert people at blind spots that the trolley is approaching. The gong is sounded when the car is going past the car barn when crossing the bike path, when starting up after stopping, and when passing the old depot near Water Street. It can be sounded at any other time that you might think to alert someone to be careful. Well, let's get started moving from the old Excelsior stop. While this stop is not the primary loading position, there are people who may wish to board here. If so, the conductor will push the buzzer once to tell the motorman to open the rear gates. This is done by moving the gate lever to the open position. When the conductor signals with two buzzers, the motorman can then close the gate. The motorman should then signal to the conductor that he wants to begin traveling in the forward position. He does so by ringing the bell twice. If the conductor feels it is safe to start moving, he should move his brake handle to the middle position and then put it in the folded position. He can then reply with two bells.